a little later on in the programme, but first of all, we have to go to Villa Park yesterday, looking spick and span with the turf a most inviting shade of green for the Charity Shield match between Aston Villa and Manchester City. Villa fresh up from the third division, and something of a surprise in their lineup today, Alan Evans, their recent buy from Liverpool, is merely a substitute, so this is virtually the team that pulled them out of the third division. One crucial purchase in the last weeks of last season was defender Chris Nickel from Luton. A great game earlier in the week against Martin Chivers. Now he faces the heading power of Wynne Davis in this Manchester City side. Potentially the most exciting and dangerous team in British football. City at full strength. And full strength means, of course, the showmanship of Rodney Marsh, beginning his first full season with Manchester City. But more than that, it means the return of Francis Lee, who had that breakdown at the end of last season. But he reckons now those boots are going to be worth 20 goals this season. But now, with that 35,000 crowd, let's join commentator Hugh Johns. Referee today, Mr Norman Burton, showed a great Yarmouth, gets the game underway. That's Manchester City on your right. In the white outfit, the... Sash across the chest of red and black. Tapping the goal on the left. First free kick of the game and immediately the claret and blue shirts of Aston Villa scurry back towards their goal mouth. Three men in the wall. It's Rodney Marsh whamming one. Rodney, Rodney Marsh. And those numbers should make it pretty easy for people to identify players. Numbers on each arm, numbers on the back, numbers on the shorts as well. Jim Coombs, goal kick for Villa. And to give him reassurance, he's given another chance to bang the ball upfield. Tommy Booth going under it, Donaghy back. Andy Lockhead giving Joe Corrigan just a little bit of trouble. Nickel, a challenge from Lee. Right breaking on the right side for Villa. Bowden's in a good position, that was a good ball for him. The pass on for right. did well. Good cross ball. Tony Towers, the hero. For Manchester City, a first-class break then by Mickey Wright, the Villa right back. Colin Bell, again feeding forward balls. This is Wynne Davis. Good challenge then from Ross. Norman Bentonshaw gives the advantage to Manchester City. Throw in. Name for Wynne Davis, who's come tight, or Doyle, who's broken down the left touch line. It's an awkward one for Coombs. That was a speculative centre. I don't think he really uh, intended a shot there, but it wound up as a curler, which would probably have crept in under the top right-hand angle. Coombs forced to play it. So, first corner of the game, Mike Summerby, Manchester City. That's a good one. Just over the bar from Colin Bell. Took it away from Tommy Boo, number five, who was right behind him, but Colin Bell knocking the first real shot of the game, real positive shot of the game. Oregon finding his length with his kicking now. It's Pat McMahon. Jeff Fadden. Colin Bell will have that. This is Marsh. And there goes referee Burtonshaw. Marsh penalised for knocking down Fadden. And referee Burtonshaw getting his own back, I think, on Manchester City for knocking him down. right for Villa Anderson trying to turn against Donaghy didn't get past the free kicks given it. 
now from the last free kick situation here. Everybody was offside, but this time Villa are firing through until Bell stops them. It's ties. Going forward for a change, getting caught. Aitken for Villa. Marsh coming at him. Aitken in some trouble there. Ian Ross for Villa. Booth getting up well again, despite the challenge of Lockhead. Ross. Rodney Marsh. In trouble with referee Norman Burton Shaw. It's a free kick. To be taken by Ross. Booth again, top man in the air. Colin Bell. Donicky breaking. A loose ball, really wasn't on for anything there. Doyle tried to make something of it. Didn't have much chance. Colin Bell. Towers. Mike Summer. Somebody who's only footed on the edges of this game so far, taking on Bowden, who has Aitken in support. Colin Bell offering his support. That's a good ball. Lee. Ross there. Doyle to try it. Ross still fighting for it. Lee wins and Win Davis. Good save. Big Win Davis. Didn't really get the meat of the boot to that shot, but it was an awkward one. It was the fire of uh, Lee and Doyle in the centre of the 18 yards area that, that made the chance. Davis, a good shot, and Jim Coo is an equally fine save. Mike Summerby then with the corner. Coombs came well. Lee to hit it. Really topped that one. Really topped it. Andy Lockhead. And Tony Book. Summerby has stayed this side after taking the corner. Trying to pick up Bell, but Graydon read it. Jim Coombs, who could have done with some of this sunshine earlier in the summer when he was playing county cricket. Graydon, giving it straight back to Donaghy. Doyle. Book square on the right. Deep. Goes back even further. Tony Towers. Some of you racing down the right touchline, the ball never reaching him. Riok against Lee. Wins the throw in off him. And Lee indicating that Riok ought to be at least four yards further back for the throw in. I quite agree with him. Whoops. That was Anderson's legs gone and. Referee Bertenshaw is reaching into his back pocket. I don't know whether he's taken the book out. It's Summerby. Well, Summerby goes in the book. And we wonder now whether that is a four-pointer, three-pointer, or two-pointer. Could have been dangerous play. In which case, it's a four-pointer. Could have been a foul tackle from behind, so it's still a four-pointer. Or it might just have been ungentlemanly conduct, in which case he might get away with two points. Colin Bell, who's been stoking up the fires for Manchester City in midfield, but they haven't really got to grips with this game properly yet. So, the free kick for Villa. Aitken with it. Booth timing his jump perfectly again. When 
Davis getting hold of it for Colin Bell. Challenge from Greg. Good one, too. Right, McMahon, Rioch way back to start with Ross. McMahon. A oh, good tackle by Doyle. Marsh on the break. Wynn Davis as Chris Nickel comes to him. Colin Bell to try one. It was always on for him to have a pop at goal there. Struck it firmly enough, but didn't cause uh, Big Jim Coombs any real problems. Great. Taking it away from Book. Anderson trying to get there. Donaghy out and Colin Bell taking over Manchester City. Some of you free in midfield. Book is breaking way on the right side and it's a good ball for him. Lee joining in. Marsh way back for Tiles. He's aiming for Davis. Nickel timed that perfectly. Awkwardly, too, with the sun in his eyes. Marsh. Doyle. Bad ball. Ross away. Lockhead. Ball just wouldn't run for him. Mike Doyle. Bell. Doyle again. Call and let it go for the goalkeeper, but Nickel played it. Mike Summerby with a shot on. Mike Summerby giving it the clatter that time, the scorer of three goals in the league in their championship run last season at Manchester City. Hungry to uh, get his name on the score sheet now. get up Andy and he did that time pushing in the back then by Willie Anderson on Donaghy so a free kick to Manchester City well the gap between the side that was in the third division last season and the side that very nearly won the first division championship not tremendously apparent at this moment of time Certainly not reflected in the scoreboard, which is still no goals. Mike Summerby for Marsh. Aitken coming to give it another bite. Marsh beautifully done. Finally, Nickel getting a boot in the way. But Rodney Marsh turning on a little of his skilled trickery in that run. Trying to coax the low one across the face of the goals, where perhaps the chip for the far post, where Davis was loitering with intent, might have been better. Anyway, it's a corner. Mike Summerby with it. That's Rioch away. Summerby, way back for Tony Brook. Doyle. Plenty of men still in the box. What happens, Davis? Down for Marsh. Oh, what a fabulous shot and an incredible save. Jim Coons. What a grin on that fella's face. A county cricketer then, and that was the sort of reactions that makes first-class slip fielders. Marsh denied a goal by absolute brilliant reflex action by Jim Coombs. He couldn't have seen that ball. Just did it by instinct, and he did it all right. Corner, Summerby. Lee. Ambitious then. Franny Lee, the ambitions and confidence of a boy who whacked in 35 goals last season, fully shown in that speculative long-range shot. Lockhead knocks it down. Aitken having to scramble a bit sharpish. Ray Graydon, not much of this game left. Not much of this first half left, that is. This may be Villa's last despairing attempt for a goal in the first half. Willie Anderson as Donaghy comes very tight to him. That's a youthful ball. Look here. Graydon. 
Oh, no, that was a useful ball. Graydon was the last man to have a go at it. Lockhead the first. As Summerby breaks back for Manchester City. Franny Lee on the right side. Support from behind by Doyle if he wants it. Ross there to cover. We're in stoppage time now, and the only real stoppage we had was when Summerby was booked. Who's losing contact with that ball? Anderson fighting against Donaghy. Towers and other of these bright youngsters losing out that time. Anderson. That's a fair ball for McMahon. Yes! On the near post. Corrigan making an excellent grab right on the near post. Slick moving in, thinking by Anderson and moving by McMahon. Good anticipation by Corrigan. And indeed, there is the half-time whistle. So, the charity shield at this moment, its destination, which boardroom it's going to, undecided. No goals on the board, and the fellow most happy about that, I would think, Jim Coombs, for the fabulous save he made from Rodney Marsh. We'll be back with more football in just a few moments. I hope you'll join us then. Well, welcome back then, as referee Norman Burton Shaw notices that Villa have made a substitution. He's just checking on it. There it is. Alan Evans is on for Andy Lockhead. The lad who started with Wolves as Villa kick off the second half. Alan Evans, who started with Wolves, went to Liverpool, joined Villa just a few weeks ago in a £70,000 transfer deal. Put in there now to get some goals to change the scoreline. There's Anderson. Turned out to be a good ball into the box. McMahon challenging for it. Well, Willie Anderson's shot for goal turning out to be a pass to this chap, McMahon. Hooking it over the bar. There's McMahon. So Alan Evans in action. His first competitive game for Aston Villa. He got his first outing against Spurs in midweek. Didn't look too sharp. Put on a little bit of weight, but now given 45 minutes to get into action. That's Davis winning in the air, going for Marsh. Mickey Wright sticking tight to him. And Wright winning that challenge. Some of it now. Doyle in midfield. Davis. Towers to hammer one. And only against Ross. It's a bit high and awkward for Graydon. Not a good ball for him. Towers constantly eager to get into the action. Aitken then for Vaud. Mahn taking over. Slow to turn and then get restarted. He's running into trouble. It's Davis who robbed him. Davis puffing out his cheeks and getting up a good head of steam here. What support? Gets it from Summerfield. Some of he's still going. Oh, he did that beautifully. Ross puts it away from the corner. Mike Summerby never gave up with determined running then. Saw the gap between two defenders, kept on going. Chipping that ball as he hoped across the face of the goal until Ian Ross knocked it away. Corner right side, and the man who started it all, Mike Summerby, will take it. Nickel puts it away again. Well, the defence a little bit uh, confused, I think, with the sound of a whistle. I'm not sure whether it was referee Burtonshaw encouraging him to get on with a corner kick or somebody in the crowd with a whistle. Anyway, it goes for a corner on the far side. Francis Lee will take it. Tommy Boo, the big number five, is standing right up in front of Jim Coombs. Knocked away by Ross. Ian Ross like Alan Evans, a buy from Liverpool, and proving a very, very valuable acquisition. Davis losing out in the air against Nickel. Rodney Marsh. And Colin Bell. He meant that as a shot, but it was a bad one. 
Bell having to slow things up because Villa had come out to play everybody offside. Didn't catch Summerby though. Took his eye off the ball for a second. Good chance wasted. Song with Davis. Marsh taking it off Manchester City. Well taken out by Aitken. But Mahn now, a little push forward for break. And Villa on the break now. Riot picking up Anderson. What a poor ball. Promising attack breaking down. Ian Ross now, start of going again. McMahon for Aitken. McMahon delayed it, let some of you bite. Davis and Lee in a right old kerfuffle. So Villa back on the attack again. Rio. Good ball. Anderson. Nicky Wright's gone on down the right touchline. There's the cross. Some of you knocks it out. And a chance for McMahon to get much too early. Much too early. Rodney Marsh then for Lee as Manchester City weather that little storm and go back into the attack again. Good ball, Rodney Marsh. Rodney Marsh beautifully getting on the end of that. Fine run by Franny Lee. Marsh the first timer. Rio, breaking well for Villa. Tumbled down by Mick Doyle. The foul given, the free kick given. But the advantage lost. So, free kick situation for Villa to exploit when they can get the ball back. Mickey Wright, number two. Braden, the fair-haired boy, number seven. Chris Riok, number four. Braden, the touch. Riok, the shot. And it's a good one! Just into the side netting. Bruce Riok unloading a real pile driver with a left foot. He really gave that one some stick. Marsh down. Summerby. Summerby's still trying to go it alone. Very, very decisive signal by Burton Shaw, referee Burton Shaw. Free kick came to nothing, though. The advantage was fritted away. Free kick signaled by the linesman against Tommy Booth. The tackle on Alan Evans, a free kick then to Villa. Aitken. Evans, a good flick on. Ooh, shocking tackle in by Bowden. Good job he didn't go straight through. Rodney Marsh. Bell. Doyle. That's Marsh. Waiting for the ball, and Ross didn't. Ross needs some help down in that corner, though. No, he doesn't. He gets out of it all by himself. And gets a real roar from this crowd. Right then, on for Rioch, who picks up McMahon in midfield. Anderson screaming for it this side of the park. The advantage breaking down now. They've given City a chance to go back and cover up the holes. Oh, 
That's City Ball. Franny Lee. Somerville. Colin Bell. That's good running by Somerville. Something on here. A penalty. That's what it is. Somerville taken down by Jim Coombs. Referee Burtonshaw points dramatically to the spot. And we're probably going to see the greatest penalty expert in the business. Franny Lee. British record holder with 15 last season. Trot forward to score his first competitive goal of the season. Well, let's just see. Franny Lee then. As the Villa fans try to put him off. Some of you remember, tumbled down by Coombs. It's Lee versus Coombs. It's 1 0 Manchester City. 25 and a half minutes into the second half. Francis Lee, a superbly struck. Perfectly placed penalty kick makes it one nothing Manchester City And there is the scoreline So Manchester City Here in their sixth occasion in the charity shield final at the moment One nothing up and looking as though they might win it for the third time their previous victories, 1937 when they beat Sunderland 2-0, 1968 when they pulverised West Bromwich Albion 6-1. Aitken long for Evans. No problem for Corrick. Ross then for Vag. Now, Aitken. Evans, a good knock ball for Vaud. Still with it. Something useful building up here. Until the doll removes Vaud's legs. Referee Burton Shaw, very positive with his signal. It's a good break developing. Now, we've already seen Rioc unload a left foot shot from long range. I wonder if he's going to do the same thing with this free kick situation. Francis Lee indicating where he thought the effects took place. Rather anxious wall. Aitken, the villa man, who is on the edge of the wall. Number seven is Graydon. Franny Lee is trying to block off any attempt by Rioc to hammer a shot. <laughs> Lee doing a backward ballet and might get in trouble here. And Vowden to try a shot. Nicol and now Rioc. Cannons off everybody. Ian Ross. Not a well-aimed ball that time. Well, we're getting down to the uh, final stages of this Charity Shield game. About 10 to 11 minutes left. And that penalty kick of Francis Lees, the decisive factor at the moment. Tony Book. Miller in some difficulty against Wright. They won't let him past. The linesman indicated a Manchester City ball. Referee Burton Shaw says no. Marsh taking over for City. It's a fair ball. Bell, it was just fractionally wrong eventually. Jeffries. Rodney Bosch didn't get there. Willie Anderson taking off for Villa. Boy, you can really fly down the touchline, but he's slowed right down. Summerbeer's back there to stop. 
and Towers. Neatly done. Some of you there. Oh, what a bad ball. Aitken. It's Bowden trying to get under it, knocking it down for Evans. Wouldn't you? Ball hung in the air, it wouldn't come down. Miller, long striding legs going down that left touch line, and Mickey Wright staying tight with him. Dogged little bit of defensive play by Mickey Wright. Aitken. Aitken for Villa as Rioch comes back to offer himself for the pass. It's Rodney Marsh getting in the way, free kick. Pretty unintentional, really, as the two players firmly display by that show of friendship. Chris Nickel, number five for Villa, with the free kick. To the flick off Marsh. Ross, the last man in defence, as he's so often been this afternoon for Villa. Now Villa basically have got only Nickel and Ross in positive defensive positions. Everybody going forward looking for the equaliser. Graydon on the ball at the moment. Broke for him, he's going to try one. A little trickle, left footed, going for the near post. Corrigan was there. Tony Book. Late challenge then by Mickey Wright, giving the free kick. Luckily, Burton Shaw having a word with Colin Bell, saying if anybody's going to do any talking here, it'll be me. Burton Shaw's had another look at his watch as this match to City. Attack builds up. Some of you joining in. Jeffries. This is Lee. Jeff Bowden, the challenge coming from Towers. And a positive one it was, as usual. Colin Bell. Oh, a gift of a ball to Bowden. Bell has misplaced quite a few of his passes this afternoon, but it doesn't matter anymore. The game is over. Francis Lee's penalty kick gives Manchester City the FA Charity Shield with that 1-0 scoreline. As Francis Lee, the most deadly penalty kicker in the business, and he's done it again for Manchester City this afternoon. Well, the pictures there came from ATV. I suppose it's uh, fair to say, by their own high standards, Manchester City were a little disappointing. I heard Malcolm Ellison describe it afterwards as a good training match, which I suppose it was. So only a penalty separated the two sides. There's no doubt about it, it was a fairly given penalty. That ball from Colin Bell, some of you chasing after it well. Jim Coombs, you'll see there, taking some of his legs. I suppose the tragedy for Villa was that Mike Somerby probably had given it up for loss in any case. The ball probably would have gone out without him reaching it. Francis is a thumper when it comes to penalty. Coombs knew that. He moved, in fact, before Francis hit the ball. But even then, he really had no chance of getting it. And that's the penalty that decided the charity shield. Well, now let's meet the man who conceded that penalty, Jimmy Coombs, the Aston Villa goalkeeper, because after the game, Hugh Johns asked him what he thought about Francis Lee, the penalty king. Well, I'd, um, I'd made my mind up which way I was going to go already, but, um, of course, you know, he clips a good penalty. And even though I went probably the right way... Uh, is it far too hard for me? I'm afraid. Really, was beautifully slotted in. Oh yeah, he takes it. Takes it up. Did you have any grouse at all about the uh, award of the penalty kick, Jim? It's very difficult to say. I'd like to see it myself. You know, I'm obviously I probably watch it on on the television, but um, I wasn't at all happy. You know, I thought that, that he'd given the ball up, and I'd almost given the ball up. I suppose in, in many ways I should have just left it at that, really. But you sort of follow through, and I was a bit sloppy. And I suppose he gives the penalty, and that's it. There's no point in arguing. <laughs> Quite a day for you because you were obviously the man of the match as far as the first half was concerned with that incredible save from Rodney Marsh. Somerby, way back for Tony Brook. Doyle, plenty of men still in the box. One of them is Davis. Down for Marsh. Oh, what a fabulous shot and an incredible save.
The look on your face as you sat on the deck afterwards seemed to think, make me think anyway, that you didn't, you hadn't really known very much about no, it. I hadn't really. As, as Rodney sat down, you know, and he just sort of looked at me and started to laugh. And I mean, I, I had to laugh myself because I think I knew even less where he'd gone than he did. <laughs> what actually makes you take off in a situation like I, that? I, I don't think you know really, Hugh. I think it's a matter of training, that's all. I think you, you, the ball comes and you react. And then afterwards you think, well, why did I react? And I think it's just something that comes natural after, um, after working at it in training. What uh, are your reflections on the game today now? Third division champions last season. Did you feel at any time that you were out of your class against uh, a top side like Manchester City? Amazing, really, you. I think City played as a compliment of coming here to defend. <laughs> I thought that um, they contained us very well, but I mean, for a first division side, probably one of the best in Europe, to contain somebody who just come up from the third division is, uh, is a great compliment to us. The Villa goalkeeper, Jim Coombs. In fact, Manchester City also did a fair amount of attacking and we saw some genuine skills from Rodney Marsh. I would think it's fair to say that Marsh and George Best probably take more stick than anybody else from away crowds. But I would also venture to suggest that Rodney will drag men from their firesides more than anybody else just to see his skills this winter. We saw some uh, good points of Rodney Marsh. We saw his aggression, but I think it's this sort of thing. Well, here he's fighting for the ball here. Uh, he was very aggressive in times, and this is something obviously that Manchester City are beginning more and more to instill in him. He fought for that ball all the way across the width of that pitch, but I think this is the sort of thing that we know better. A little pass out there from Summerby, and just watch how he tricks Aitken here. There seems to be no way in such a confined area, but he slips the ball impossibly one side of Aitken, and then goes the other, and then aims this ball towards the near post, which is cut out at the very last moment. He also seems to be working in well with Manchester City now. He knew just where Francis Lee wanted to put this ball and he was there on the spot. In fact, he was just a little bit off balance and put it wide. But we had that magic moment that we've already spoken about with that save from Jim Coombs. Doyle playing it here and turned in for Marsh after Wynne Davis knocks it on. A superb piece of goalkeeping. And also a lovely bit of play. Look at Norman Burtonshaw there. Good also to see a referee emotionally getting involved with the thoughts of the players as well. So that was one of the magic moments of the Charity Shield. And there we are. We've had the pipe openers. The real stuff, as I say, starts next Saturday.